Hey, welcome back everybody. It's Brian with Team Aquascape. Last week was a ton of fun. The build they did out in Tanners was super, super awesome, super inspirational. If you didn't see it, go back to last week's episode and check that out. But if last week was fun, this week's gonna be even more fun. We have so much going on. This week, we're back in Naperville. We're not gonna finish. We're not gonna finish, but we have some stuff to show you out there. So before we take you back to Naperville, we talked about a pond we were doing for a wedding. I definitely wanna show you the process of that, kind of take you through the whole transformation. So that's gonna be awesome. I always love those transformations from just dirt to mulch to running water all within a couple days so that one's super cool we'll take you back over there trevor is going to take you up on the roof those of you guys that haven't seen that green building and how the green roof at aquascape and how we maintain that stuff he's going to take you up there chris has got a super awesome little tidbit on how to clean a pondless reservoir and we're going to take you through step by step on how we do that or chris is going to take you through step by step on how we do that and how important that is we're going to relate it a little bit to the job we're doing in, in Naperville because that one's already requiring some maintenance and some of the things that we're doing out there to kind of negate the maintenance in that project. So yeah, make sure you stay tuned to all of it because Chris has got a lot going on. And of course, we're still prepping for our pond tour. So shout out on that pond tour. Make sure you guys are marking your calendar September 23rd, 24th in the Chicagoland area out here in Illinois. All right, guys, hang on tight. It's going to be a fun episode. We are going to build a pondless waterfall. The best way to learn anything is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. All right, so let's start this episode with a quick little flashback to what we did last week, that wedding pond. Here we go. And Mary, we're about ready to turn on. You're excited? Yeah. I mean, if you're smiling like that now, <laughs> wait till we put the bump on. Oh, my God. Go ahead. Yeah, what do you think? Oh. Oh, that's a Starbucks, oh my God. No, that's, that's you did a Starbucks commercial. You know me. <laughs> <laughs> So very, very rarely do we get to see the homeowner's reaction to turning the pump on. And they've been so patient with us. And actually, I think we milked it for a couple extra days just because of the lunches. Because they were fantastic. Yeah, they were me. fantastic. <laughs> All right, let's turn this on and see what it looks like. the coolest <laughs> is this for real this is all my i'm sorry ours <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> and how about the beach for the dogs i know isn't that great it, You're gonna be so happy. it reminds me of the one that you have at apple land yeah where it's like you know when i go visit randomly and i bring every one of my friends over there your waterfalls is way cooler than mm -hmm. anything at aqua land I, I it doesn't look like a yard. No, I feel like we need to do more. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is crazy. This is crazy. <laughs> and then you've got a great little waterfall Can I down go over here. You? Yeah, go, go enjoy. backyard is literally all shade and for some reason the sun found the waterfall right when we were about to turn it on cool little beach area for their dogs and come right down in here and get a drink water then goes through our famous peekaboo bridge right in there <laughs> down in here and then we got a fireball so this is the wedding gift over here <laughs> this pond is the whole wedding the whole way <laughs> so tell me that story so kelly and i got married and i didn't want to have a wedding i wanted a because I've been an aqua skate fan for like five years. Uh -huh. So when I when we moved to St. Charles and we realized that you were in the same time, I freaked out. <laughs> and I was like, I created a business case and I came to Kelly and I was like, instead of a wedding, wouldn't it be nice if we just had a better return in a pond? And he bought into it and here we are. That a boy, Kelly. <laughs> so worth it. This yeah. is awesome. New level. And I remember calling you, I'm like, Brian, I traded my wedding for this. We gotta make it happen. <laughs> this is so so we gave him this little guy here. It's just a little wedding gift. We really wanted Kelly to have something visible from his office. The pond's great, but to actually see some running water is so nice. And so this is Kelly's office here. This is Mary's daughter's room up there. She kind of wins for sure. And, and look at Buster down over Buster. here. Oh, look at him going. 
guys. You want to see the beach? There you go. <laughs> That's a wrap on this one. It really sucked. Oh my gosh, I'm a little dirty. <laughs> it really sucked that we had to leave Naperville, but love doing ponds for great people. They were fantastic. Loved the reaction. It is a really cool waterfall. It's a cool design. We've got a cool bridge in there. It's three feet deep. I know they're just going to absolutely love it. And knowing Ellie and getting to know, getting to know both of them over the last year, you can tell they're the type of customer that is going to tinker with this all the time. And the customers that tinker with it all the time mean it's going to be that much better year after year after year. They're totally addicted to it. In fact, they canceled the wedding just to put the money into this. So let's go back, recap everything we did, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye. Really cool, simple waterfall. Like always, frame rock on one side, frame rock on the other side. Luckily, they had that piece of stone on the property for us, and we were able to just kind of fit it in between there. I love Deep Cave. It goes way back behind the waterfall. It's so cool. They had this liverwort all over on the hillside, so we put that on there. I've got it all over my waterfalls. That stuff is going to spread all over this rock and just come all down into here. We also had that rock, which worked out just perfect getting it in there. My biggest fear was that when that rocked right in there onto this rock, it was going to slash all over the place. But because of practice and stuff, I knew that if this rock was thick enough or wide enough from here to there, the water actually gets a chance to pool up on that rock, causing it to not splash. If this rock were half the thickness, that water would drop down, hit this, and splash all over the place. So having that little bit of pool on there allowed that water to slow down just a little bit to give us that nice transparent sheet right through there. And then the way that water curves off of this rock is just fantastic. That Japanese maple up there is going to make it. The pom-poms over there. And then they've got a different type of Japanese maple that's going to go back and through here. All of these ferns are going to spread all over the place. Kind of keeping with that whole natural look. I love the way that water moved back down through here. Underneath the stepping stones, call it that peekaboo bridge because that little gap in between, you can see that water moving through and then comes down back into the pond. Let me show you this waterfall from a different angle. It's actually my favorite style, just bringing two rocks together in a point. So great sound. Water just kind of splits around that rock and twists back in. Then I have to get the fireball. Over there, take a look at that. Because the propane can does not add ambiance. So from this area here, we've got the fire bowl. Imagine this with ground cover all over the place. And then looking off into the distance as the deer migrate through here on, I guess, a daily basis. So they use that creek down there as kind of their highway and they come right up and through here. This water here pushes the water that way. The water from the stream pushes the water this way and it just looks fantastic. And you can see they've already started decorating with their air chairs. So this is gonna be a very, very comfy spot. The only other place we tried to get a view from because it's not visible from a lot of the house is an area up here on the deck. So from this deck, sitting in those chairs, if we turn around, you get to see that waterfall. Dog Beach. Hey, hopefully you guys like this one. Tell me your favorite part about this small pond. I think it's fantastic. I love that it fits to scale with this yard. It reminds me a lot of Laura from Garden Answers. Not every pond is visible from inside the house, but we have to try to create a whole little vignette for that space. And so this is truly going to be a secret garden. People move through their property and come back through here. They're going to find this little space, and I think it's going to be a super, super special place. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Like, I feel like I'm swimming. Yeah, like, that's a good way of putting it. Like, you keep jumping in the deep end. Like, that's how wet I am. We just spent the better part of an entire day notching out this area. I'm gonna show you a sec, right? But neither one of our brains are working quite right. Notching that out, setting this fire rock over here, setting the backside of a stone step, all for this moment right here. The suspense has got to be killing you. Boom, boom, ba -ba boom <laughs> Unbelievable, Jack, that looks so good. I'm glad we spent the time to do it. You know, eight hours, but it looks so nice coming out like that. It's gonna 
be super cool. Tomorrow, Jeff from Premier and his guys are gonna come out. They're gonna finish this patio. We're gonna pull off the job. At least we stayed late and got everything ready for Jeff. So Jeff can come out here tomorrow, do the patio. Jack, good job, buddy. Give all your viewers a high five. Enjoying the episode, everyone. Let's go back to Aqualand and check in with Trevor to see what he's got going on on the green. Hey guys, it's Trevor. I'm normally with the tech department. Today, I'm up here on the green roof. We have a bunch of volunteers helping to weed our over three acre of plantings on this roof. And so we really want to try to keep all the sedum that is here. Those are the good plants that we're trying to eventually grow this whole roof with. But there are some other species that are native species from before we did our revamp on the roof and some species that we don't want up here. So that's why we have all these volunteers with such a large area of plantings. We want all these volunteers to come out, help us take care of this because Mary, myself, and Brad are the ones that are normally doing this, but we needed some help. So, so yeah, so stay tuned for how this weeding session comes out and yeah, look forward to that. We're back on the roof. This is day two. We've gotten most of our weeding done. We have a little bit left, which they're working on back there. Brad, on the other hand, is laying down some fertilizer. And it's just recommendations, very simple stuff from the company that had installed the roof. So it's just very minor things that are gonna reduce the amount of runoff waste, but also increase the plant health and the soil conditions that are up here. So we're gonna finish up. Hopefully the roof starts to become in full bloom. Hey everyone, it's Jack here. I want to take a quick second and show you guys a working, functioning intake bay. So right here, as you can see, all of the water is getting pushed into this area and it's disappearing down through this gravel. As you can see, all these ripples into the water, you can see this leaf debris here. The biggest thing is with our intake bays on our larger scale project, we like to have these intake bays because that way it can accumulate a lot more debris and it can handle a lot more water volume. The thing is you want to keep up on the maintenance with these because later on in the video, Chris is going to explain on how to fully clean an intake bay and the importance of cleaning the intake bay keeping up on the maintenance on. What's up everybody? It's Chris and then I also have Tyler with me and we are headed into a backyard of one of my favorite projects of all time. Absolute favorites of all time. And we are out here doing a little bit of routine maintenance. This is the first time I've been here in about a year and a half and this place looks absolutely incredible but we're running into a challenge with the negative edge area of this water feature being clogged. But I tell you what, this has to be one of my top five water features I've ever been a part of building. It is absolutely incredible. It is stunning, absolutely stunning. You guys wanna check it out? Okay, so here it is, everybody. Some of you may or may not remember this project from a vlog probably about three years ago. We put a video up of this project. We were out here for about a week and a half or two weeks. If you remember Jack and I, we put the basin in by ourselves. It's a large thousand gallon reservoir, but I just absolutely love this deep stream. Love the waterfalls, got the destination shed. I mean, that's not even a shed. That's more like a man cave back there. One of Bernie's bridges, some skyline bridges out of California. And then of course this beautiful koi pond with a cantilever patio over the top. Absolutely beautiful. I love the lily out in the middle. And Jim, the homeowner, has done such a fantastic job. But this is the area that we're gonna be working on today. So we talk about these negative edge intake areas and we do them quite a bit on cons. And, but you can tell that this area has gotten really impacted. And now all the water is traveling over top of all the gravel that's down in there and only discharging back into the aqua blocks, handful of areas. When we do this, it's an excellent alternative to a skimmer box. Now a skimmer box provides the same type of thing where it provides that top water drop, pulls all the sediment and debris that falls onto the top water and pulls it into a centralized area, which is exactly what the negative edge does as well. However, the challenge to having a skimmer box is at various points in the year, you'll be out here three or four times a week cleaning it out. Whereas the negative edge, you don't have to do that. You have a much larger infiltration area. The downside of having the negative edge versus a skimmer box is occasionally you 
you have to rip out all of the gravel and really free up that space on top of the intake area and allow that water to then flow freely back down into the aqua box the way it should. So you just have to pull out all that gravel. So it's a little bit more labor intensive, but I think if you were to multiply it out over the amount of times that you're cleaning your skimmer boxes throughout the course of a year versus coming here every other year and spending time to rip out all the gravel and put down fresh gravel, making sure that the aqua blocks are clean, it may equal out or it may even end up in the favor of the negative edge. I'm not really sure. I'd have to break out my calculator. That's what we're gonna be doing today. Okay, folks, it's not as bad as I originally thought. I neglected to remember that we actually ran a bib liner over a majority of these aqua blocks. What I mean by that is down underneath here is all bare liner. And once we get this nice and clean, I'll show you that. But the only real infiltration areas is this area right in here and right in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean out all of this dirty gravel, get this out of here, get this out of here, clean these flow cell panels. And if I need to replace them, I will. But we're gonna go ahead and just kind of clean all this gravel off and get all of that gravel clean. I'm gonna leave it. And then maybe what I'll do is I'll cut a little bit more of an area for that water to infiltrate into the aqua box. But I thought the whole thing was impacted into here when indeed it is not. So this is just a piece of scrap liner put down over top of the aqua box to get that water to travel and then discharge down into the aqua box. So it's something that I neglected to remember. It's been a few years since I've been out here. So we're gonna go ahead and do a little bit easier of a fix. And then we will keep you updated as we go and you guys can see the finished product. All right, so Tyler's continuing to work through that gravel, just kind of rinsing and stirring, rinsing and stirring, and we're pushing all kind of that dirty water back over towards the clean out pump. So bear with me, I'm gonna speak up, but this is that bib liner that we have, and this goes over the entirety of the reservoir right here, and we left these open areas back here, and then back here as infiltration areas. And you can see over time, these aqua block panels that we have in here, and then these flow cell panels have gotten clogged. So if I can't pressure wash them free of debris, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just remove them and put down new ones. And I think I'm going to still open up a little bit more and then we're going to put big gravel over the top of this. What I want to also do is I want to create a barrier between the little gravel that's back there and then the open spot of the aqua blocks using this big gravel to hopefully help hold back that little gravel to keep it from coming in here and clogging these little infiltration area spots. So we're going to clean this stuff up and, and then just keep working, plugging away, and getting this area opened up, and this area opened up, free of debris. All right, so I've got the bib liner folded back now, and you can see just how impacted these flow cell panels are. And then here's the aqua blocks underneath. So they are relatively open. I'm gonna clean up a lot of this small gravel that's in here, and I'm going to end up putting a piece of geogrid down here in this area. I'm gonna cut out a little bit more of these flow cell panels, but I'm gonna put a piece of geogrid over here, and then just create a big gravel barrier that this allow that small small gravel from migrating over here and clogging up the bases. I'm gonna open this area up a little more. Tyler's over there kind of working on the other side, but we've got probably another hour or so here of just kind of fixing this. Guys and girls, this is routine maintenance, okay? It's not going out and cleaning your skimmer box a couple times a week during those heavy leaf drop seasons or anything like that, or when algae is occurring and cleaning those filter pads and the skimmer basket itself. But it is one of those things that you need to expect. So when you're selling these or planning to install these negative edges, just understand the drawbacks of running bib liners over the top, the infiltration areas, the size of those infiltration areas. Obviously take into account the surroundings, the overstory trees, windblown debris, that kind of stuff, and really make a calculated decision on how you want to design your water feature. So let's get back at it. Right, so here's what those aqua blocks are supposed to look like once they're all nice and clean. Tyler's picking out the last of the debris. Now I'm going to lay down some of this geo grid as opposed to putting some of those flow cell panels back down. The reason we put those flow cell panels, which are these panels right here with the square openings, those are to help us give a little bit of structure to the top of these aqua blocks and if we're putting rocks that are a little bit more point loaded and that kind of stuff it just helps disperse the weight a little bit more and prevent us from actually crushing these aqua block panels that are on the top of the aqua blocks so it's structural but what it also does is it disallows debris from then going down into there so it's definitely done its job because you can see how impacted these things are they end up you know kind of spreading the water out and things don't really flow down through them they kind of flow out and then they will clog at the top of the surface so i removed those i'll put some geo grid down with which should make it a little bit easier to clean rather than trying to flush these out because this is much more easy to replace. So I'm gonna put this on top of the aqua box now and then we'll put the big gravel on top of that and then the homeowner will have a nice infiltration area in through here to work with. Boys, 
boys and girls out there, men and women and children alike. We are now wrapped up. You can see Tyler back there kind of wrapping up the hose. The clean out tank is empty and we have finished cleaning out this reservoir and the infiltration areas where the water is actually getting down into the aqua box, getting back down to the pump the way it should. So here's what we're looking at. We cleaned up all this gravel. If you remember that was all covered in matted algae and that kind of stuff. And then this area and this area were the areas most heavily impacted with algae and debris. That's where those flow cell panels were all clogged that we pulled out and ended up putting geo grid down. And then what I did is I just used a bunch of big gravel, which is much easier to move and less likely to clog the aqua box and the geo grid than the small gravel. So just created big open areas for that water to get back down through. And as debris and stuff floats across the pond, comes down into the basin, it will start collecting here. And as it builds, it's gonna continue to work its way back into this open area. So super important when you're maintaining these and you're informing your customers, or if you live with one of these, is maintain this area as best you can. And that will disallow that stuff from, from continuing to grow into this gravel bed, this infiltration area, and getting it to the point where when we got out here, the entire basin was impacted other than a little area down in here where the water was actually getting back down to the pumps. The reason I say that is when this area gets all clogged in the area behind me, what will happen is water level will continue to get drawn by the pumps down through the reservoir. Water level in the basin continues to elevate and what can happen is you can develop a low edge simply by driving water level up and the water will end up discharging out over the liner instead of getting back down to the pumps the way it should. So super important that you maintain these areas the same way you would a skimmer box, but just do not neglect them to and let them get to the point where they were and you avoid problems. A little bit of routine maintenance always helps. However, it's not nearly as frequent as using a skimmer box. So that's the benefits of the negative edge versus the skimmer box. Obviously the aesthetics, you get a cool little waterfall like you see behind me as well, but just know that there's maintenance associated with both and those are the positives and drawbacks connected with the two. Thanks everybody. We'll see you later. Guys, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Thank you so much for watching. You are not going to want to miss next week's episode where you'll see more of this incredible project, but you're also going to see a cornucopia of things. You're going to see the installation of a fire and water spillway bowl up the edge of a pond. That is going to be done by yours truly. You're not going to want to miss that. I'm going to walk you through all the tips and tricks and the things to look out for when doing that. You're also going to see an incredible facelift of an existing pond by none other than Tony Alcala himself. So really, really excited about that. So the last thing I want to leave you with is please, please, please do not forget about our pond tour. It's coming up on the 23rd and 24th of this month. Do yourself a favor, click the link below, get yourself registered, get the ticket, head out to all of the beautiful outdoor paradises that we've created over the years that our customers are so generously opening up their homes to and allowing you guys to witness. And we're also going to have a very special surprise at Brian's house. We're going to have a party that night. So hopefully you guys can make it, but do yourselves a favor, get out to our pond tour and check us out. We'll see you guys later. Till next week.